Hello and welcome to join me as we explore Akureyri, the capital of Northern Iceland, the home of 20,000 people which many claim to be an ethnic group of its own. As usual, we started the journey on the map, overlooking Iceland's deepest fjord, Eyjafjörður. It stretches 60 kilometers inland from the north coast, surrounded by mountains, and at the bottom of the fjord we find Akureyri, which is also my old hometown. And uh, as I often do in my town series, I start by asking what Icelanders think of when Akureyri is mentioned. And in this case, we have a plenty to choose from. But first, I would say it is the beauty of the town, often the good weather they have around there. But all Icelanders will say it is the accent, because you can easily hear if an Icelander is from Akureyri. But Iceland has indeed only two dialects, the normal Icelandic dialect and the Akureyri dialect. But the only difference though is that the pronunciation is harder up north, way harder, like in the word uh, milk, which sounds like milk in Reykjavik, but uh, milk in Akureyri. And there is lots to come about the quirks and quirks of the Akureyri tribe. So this was a fun video for me to make, both uh, easier and harder than uh, many of my other town visits that I'm sharing on my channel. It was easier since I have a lot of footage from all seasons to share with you this time, but harder since I had to go cherry picking, since uh, there is just so much that can be said about the tribe up north. And uh, I feel as I'm in a way introducing you to a nation of its own, a nation with its own language and own culture. And the fact that I have lived half my life in Reykjavík and the other half in Akureyri will provide you with unique insight information. Information that you won't find in any tourist brochure. But uh, I will try to keep my approach tourist friendly as well, since after all, this is a town that has a lot to offer to the world. But uh, let's start with the history. This is Helgi Mari or Helgi the Slim, who settled all Eyjafjörður in the 9th century and built his own farm at a site that he called Kristnes, Christ Cape, around 12 kilometers south of Akureyri. But as for the town's development, the first buildings were made by Danish merchants, but the first residential house wasn't built until late 18th century, when Akureyri became a certified trading post. And the name of the town, Akureyri, originates from a field. Akur means a field. And many of those old fields can still be seen from this aerial photo from the 1950s. So the land under this town, like in most of Eyjafjörður, was and still is a good farmland. Or uh, as an old Icelandic saying goes, it is where butter drips from its straw, even though we are only 100 kilometers away from the Arctic Circle. Danish influences would mark the town right from the beginning, and they taught the local villagers how to plant trees and flowers, and the gardening is today the main characteristic of the town. And the people around here, they still love everything Danish. And in fact, they love it so much that the King of Denmark visited them in 1907. And those were the glory days for the villagers that all gathered downtown to celebrate the king. And uh, 65 years later, the Queen of Denmark came to visit Akureyri. So to honor her, they made a new highway through town and called it the Queen's Road. Again, those were the glory days for the people in Akureyri. And uh, ever since, there has been this myth or that the people around here speak Danish on Sundays. And uh, I suspect that some of my family members are doing so, but they are reluctant to admit it. <music> the Danes were eager to buy meat and wool products, so in the late 19th century, the local farmers formed a cooperative society, Co-op, which made a strong impact in the growth and the development of the town. There was a leather factory here for a while, a clothing factory, shoe factory, and Akureyri was for a long time the main stronghold of the co-op policy and politics. But the old co-ops would not handle the retail competition that was later to come, and most of them went bankrupt. But in Akureyri, they lived on way longer, and there is still a certain conservatism among the townspeople. 
the people around here, they just ate what the co-op is uh, sold, and uh, if the cops didn't sell it, it had to be a suspicious product. So Aquarius was and still is a kind of matrix of its own. But uh, I do happen to be an expert in this field, since my last job in Aquarius was a salesman job for the largest wholesale company outside the Reykjavik region. So I used to work closely with uh, many food importers who always said the same thing about us up north. Selling something new to people in this town is hopeless, especially when it comes to food. And uh, I remember this uh, so well as a young salesman that uh, always had the best of times when I had something new or some fresh ideas to sell. And uh, during this period, products uh, such as uh, imported uh, frozen pizzas were introduced uh, for the first time to the market. So I gave it a go to try to sell frozen pizzas to the local merchants in Aquarity. But the replies would be something like this. This uh, pizza thing, if we put this in our freezers, there will be less room for the sheep heads. And uh, to describe the mentality around here even better, there is this good old Icelandic joke about people from Akureyri, and uh, it originates from the traditional Icelandic Christmas bread that uh, looks like this. Thin, crispy bread that we fry in sheep fat before Christmas. But the joke goes like this. What did the guy from Akureyri say when he saw a pizza for the first time? Who threw up on my Christmas bread? And uh, this is a joke that uh, tells a lot about the mentality up here. So uh, I gave up on the town and uh, I felt as uh, it had no room for my ideas and uh, moved to Reykjavik, where I would work for a progressive retail company for the next four years until I bought my own retail store that I would operate for the next 25 years. But my customers could recognize my accent all the time. It's just uh, hard to get rid of it. And uh, I didn't try it actually, but I am back in Aquarius now, but only for a while, and it gave me the chance to rediscover the town from a new perspective, and enjoy the best of what it has to offer, because Aquarius has plenty to offer, but uh, things have sure changed a lot around here. The new generation is not as old-fashioned as their parents were, and uh, there is more flow of people through town as Aquarius has even its own university now. This uh, used to be a kind of closed society, but I heard it from students uh, the other day that this has changed. They can actually go out uh, pubbing and socializing nowadays with the local people, and uh, that's an improvement for sure. But despite the extensive school structures that have been built up here in the recent decades, Aquarelli is still an industrial town. It is the home of Iceland's uh, largest uh, fishery company and the largest uh, brewery. They had a candy factory for many years, but it was sold and the new owner moved to Reykjavik and the townspeople have never forgiven him for moving their own chocolate brand to Reykjavik. The so-called industry smell in town comes from a coffee roasting factory and uh, also from the place where they smoke the traditional Icelandic honky cut. But uh, meat processing is still very strong industry in and around town. And the inner market in Aquarelli is still very much present. These people want to get their Sunday roast from a local company or a local farmer and uh, enjoy a cup of coffee from the local coffee roasting factory. And the same goes for shopping. So they did a good job by building the largest shopping mall outside the capital region not so long ago. And for a long time there was this pressure to open up an aluminium smelter in the fjord. But fortunately, it never came to be. In my opinion, we should place such factories in ugly landscapes. And we just don't find that around here. One of the oldest industries in town was shipbuilding, or a profession that my grandfather used to work in for a while. They even built freight ships here, but due to competition and cheap labor elsewhere, they only do repairs and modifications now. Aquarelli is in the midst of an agricultural region, mostly dairy farms. So there is a big uh, milk processing plant in town and other companies that service the farmers around. And some of the farmers offer tourist services like this one, who has this little coffee shop in a cow shed. 
and there is growing interest among Icelanders to buy products uh, directly from the farmers. And in my opinion, that's the way to do it. And a tour to Aquarius should include a trip to some of the deep valleys of the fjord. And for those who have jeeps, it's possible to drive all the way up to the highlands from the innermost valley of Eyjafjörður. But uh, as for the north part of the fjord, I have already covered all villages around there, so I'm leaving links for them. But the distance from the mouth of Eyjafjörður to the end of the innermost valley of the fjord is around 120 kilometers. And the whole of Eyjafjörður is a wonderland of its own, with uh, plenty of things to do. And uh, since I'm moving a bit into tourism, let's go skiing first. The mountain above Akureyri, Líðarfjall, offers uh, some of the best skiing facilities in Iceland. And we start here by this old building that has always been called the Ski Hotel, even though it's not operated as such. But uh, when they built it, they used the timber from the old hospital in town, and according to the staff there, it is a haunted house. But the locals don't mind, since uh, ghosts of past times do simply thrive well in Akureyri. The slopes are of all difficulty levels, and the latest addition to the ski lifts is this one, elevating the guests to over 1000 meters. There have been winters with very little snow in the recent decades, so they do have machinery to make snow now, but uh, it seems though it's getting colder again, so it is getting easier to keep the mountain open. And winter sports are an important and growing part of the tourist infrastructure in town. And I do have a longer video online covering the ski slopes and linking to that. But a new motel is now being built by the roots of the ski slopes. Or just around here with the mountain here in the background. So they have this uh, great tourist spot there in the making. And this is how the northern lights looks from here. Usually, I don't recommend that the people go northern light sightseeing near towns, but in the case of Akureyri, it's a photogenic town, so you can work your way around it. It is an ice skating rink in Akureyri, so it is by far the best place in Iceland when it comes to winter sports. It is uh, as simple as that. But uh, let's move to summer view again as we move down the mountain after the snow is gone. There we find the auto club with new race tracks where they can do the stunts that they can't do elsewhere. And one of the highlights of the tourist season is the so-called uh, car days in Akureyri, or a long weekend that's also been driving some of the residents crazy due to the noise and often uh, careless driving in town. So the car days are not the days to enjoy the stillness of the fjord as the smell of nature gives in to the smell of burned rubber. But the most important part of the tourist industry is of course the local airport, which is also an international airport. It is still under construction as such, and the latest milestone was the installation of uh, ILS landing system. So it is a constant uh, battle to get funds for each and every step of the way, as they are moving into competition with the Keplavik International Airport, and there has always been a lack of scheduled flights between Akureyri and Europe, except occasionally. But uh, the day I was doing this voiceover, it was announced that a new airliner will start to operate from Akureyri as of June 2022, and uh, they will offer scheduled flights to uh, Spain, UK, and of course Denmark, using an uh, Airbus A319, and the airline name is Nice Air. Nice Air. And I have the feeling that this might just be the beginning of a larger adventure for them up north. But the Akureyri Airport offers already scheduled flights to Reykjavik many times a day, and it's also possible to fly to the island Grimsey that uh, sits on the Arctic Circle with uh, 60 inhabitants and uh, millions of puffins and other seabirds. It is not uncommon to see private jets parked there for a longer or shorter period, and fancy ships as well in the harbour. Like in this case, the sailing yacht uh, A and the private plane that accompanies it, but uh, this package was located here for one two months in 2021. So to those of us who are into photography, we don't complain, but uh, some of Iceland's best uh, salmon rivers are nearby, so that helps to bring in the big fish when it comes to tourism. 
but we are done with airport for now. So let's go downtown starting with the old town. For me it's one of the most beautiful part of Akureyri. All the houses have been renovated and uh, midst in the old town we have the local museum that uh, includes an old church built in 1846. Moved to Akureyri and uh, still used for weddings and such. And another part of the Akureyri Museum is the so-called uh, Nonne Museum, but he was perhaps the most famous son of the town. The author of uh, some of the most uh, popular children books that were even written by an Icelander. Books that were made into a TV series in Germany, so his legend uh, lives on. When the highway Queen's Road by the shoreline opened up, we got a new pond that grew to be a part of the appearance of the old town or a place where we see people with cameras very frequently and this is perhaps the best known silhouette of Akureyri with the church in the background. For me it's a kind of uh, cliché photography since uh, there are just uh, so many photos of uh, out there. But a construction company recently suggested a tall futuristic building there just behind this old house and it would have changed the appearance of the town a whole lot since there are no tall buildings in this part of town. And uh, it would actually have uh, improved the appearance of this part of town, because uh, it needs it. But the townspeople voted against it, and in that case I'm glad that old values stayed on top of decision making. And uh, let's swap to drone view. But those next shots are since last fall as I move on from the old town and into the town's center. We see the old uh, primary school and the old uh, theater, beautiful buildings, and the old theater is uh, still used. And the primary school was uh, renovated like 20 years ago and looks nice today. And up on the hill we have the junior high school, so those houses are the old landmark buildings. But the Akureyri Church is perhaps the main landmark building today, well located above the town center, and those long uh, church steps in front of the church are sometimes used for uh, different sports, like this annual competition. It's the most uh, famous church steps in Iceland, just over 130. And the old town center includes this uh, first uh, shopping street in town, but it's a more of a place to go pubbing or uh, dining nowadays, and uh, good old values are highlighted, like through the old uh, Fuji film logo, which stands for those uh, good old times before digital cameras and mobile phones. But uh, strangely enough, many of the townspeople are however using uh, mobile phones today. And the signature mountain of Akureyri can be seen well from downtown, but it is called uh, Sulur, meaning pillars. And the uh, people around there, they love it. They love the mountain, they love to hike there, go there on bicycles, play around in jeeps, make love by the roots of the mountain, watch the sunset from there, even do the whole package in a day. They uh, even tried to get Paramount Pictures to put uh, this mountain in the famous uh, movie opening theme, but uh, no luck so far. But uh, I do think it's a good marketing idea for the town though. And Akureyri has of course its own uh, town hall square. That's where everything is bustling with life during summers, and uh, the look of the square is a constant uh, subject of debate but they have changed it every now and then, not always for the better, but uh, that's not the main issue, it's always nice to be there when the weather is good. When it comes to new building downtowns, they are trying to maintain the old look, but it goes uh, so and so, could be better, could be worse, but uh, as for my taste, it's a bit crowded, since uh, I'm the type that wants to see something else than my neighbor's window when I look out. And uh, Iceland offers plenty of view, this new rounded building is however a bit from out of space, it is the town's cultural center, but the old theater isn't that big, so this is the town's main concert hall. And it's a good house and uh, well equipped as such, but uh, even for the millions spent there in uh, concrete and uh, sound systems, Akureyri is perhaps better known for this uh, tiny little concert place in the basement of one of the oldest houses by the downtown shopping street and it's called the Green Hat. It was my uncle that uh, established this little concert place and he has never had any troubles getting the best musicians in Iceland to play there. Even if it's a small place that uh, doesn't sell that many tickets. If you book them, they will come. 
So it is a concert place with an old soul and during this visit one of the oldest uh, and biggest bands in Iceland was playing or uh, Mesoforte, an instrumental jazz funk uh, fusion band from 1977. Those guys are still touring the world when they feel like it, but despite all the doors that are open to them, doors that can uh, sell uh, way more tickets than uh, here in the basement, they come like the others because this is by far the best music club in Iceland. And the sound there is great. So I'm going to let the beginning of the concert roll on while I show you some of my downtown shots that I didn't manage to squeeze in elsewhere. It's time for water sports, but the locals call the ocean in front of the old town the pond, and it's a popular playground. There is this very active sailing club in town, and those boards are getting quite popular. They are all around now, but in addition, they have plenty of uh, sport boats, fishing boats, and kayaks around. I used to love to go fishing there, especially in the spring when you could uh, catch a trout on its way to the river, and the kids are still at it today, like here fishing from the docks just by the new cultural house. And uh, in this mountain behind the pond we see this uh, man-made hot waterfall that uh, needs to be explained. But a few years back a local private company made a tunnel through the mountain in order to create a safe road connection to the northeast of Iceland. The old road lies over a mountain pass so to show you what we are dealing with we move on through the tunnels from Akureyri to East Iceland and we drive back over the old road into Eyjafjörður and the mountain pass looks uh, innocent today but it was never a safe road as for snow so the tunnels have created this uh, continuous uh, business region but it turned out to be a disaster to make them costs uh, doubled as a construction crew hit uh, hot water by a surprise and the hot water explains this uh, hottest waterfall in the world but it is about to be cut off and the water will be used for uh, natural baths that will open up soon and many will miss the waterfall for sure. But uh, as for many of the old people in town, the tunnels meant even more problems. The old generation doesn't travel that much, nor do they read the news they don't need to hear. So after the tunnels opened by the old highway out of town, the old people would sometimes uh, drive into them by accident like during Sunday trips. And in many cases, these old people would just freak out since uh, they believed that those were the tunnels of light and they were on their way to meet their maker. But uh, this is getting better now. The old people have got used to the tunnels and despite the loss from this uh, somewhat of a failed project, we have the tunnels and the hot water. And close by, where the waterfall is, we find the largest settlement of elves and hidden people in Iceland, according to many old and new tales. But uh, there we are into this rather large subject that uh, I will be talking about in another video I've been working on uh, now and then, so I'm leaving that one for later. But uh, stories from this region will be used in that one for sure due to how remarkable they are. And this mountain with its tunnels and hot waterfall and the hidden people is called Vaðlaheiði. And from Vaðlaheiði we find many good viewing spots overlooking the town, the ski mountain and Mount Sulur. This is what you often get or cruise ships making a stopover, but uh, the most popular tours from here are to the waterfall Goðafoss and the mighty Dettifoss. 
that is my favorite waterfall in Iceland. Not the sugary sweet waterfall type, but the powerful type. And uh, shrouded in uh, geological mystery, like the nearby canyon Ásbyrgi. In fact, we have some of Iceland's most spectacular geological formations close by. Formations that will be the subject of some of my upcoming videos. The climate in Aquarii is actually material for a separate video because uh, it's surprisingly good despite the high latitude. It's uh, completely different than Reykjavik and uh, personally I like the climate here way better than uh, back south. We often get uh, real summers around here and the winters are truly winters. So the contrasts between seasons are way sharper than Reykjavik where winters can be described as uh, constant boredom until the so-called summer comes. Then it gets just uh, a bit better for a few months. And uh, what I like the most about the weather in Aquarii is how calm it gets, especially during evenings. That's when the pond starts to reflect the mountains around. That's when I never want to move. Or uh, until I hear the local people talk about technology. That's when I snap back. And uh, on the downside, the winters tend to be long and the spring tends to be cold from the northern winds from the Arctic. And it's not good for the mentality. But I have this uncle that recently moved uh, up north and during his first winter that was pretty hard on us. He wrote and published a book of poets about the winter, a book that turned out to be cold, dark and sarcastic, just like that winter. But uh, I think he is uh, recovering little by little. So snow removal cost has been hard on the town for the last years, but uh, it comes with the territory. But uh, as for uh, winter photography, this is a wonderful place, especially in December when the snow is fresh and again in February when the days are getting longer again. But January is uh, too dark for my taste, but the summer always comes. People flock out to work in their gardens and Aquarii once again sticks out as the greenest town in Iceland. In fact, it's getting a bit crowded, so they have some restrictions now when it comes to the height of the trees because people are just going, you know, crazy with this tree planting stuff. But the most famous garden in Aquarii is, of course, the northernmost botanic garden in the world where you can find over uh, 7,000 native and uh, foreign species. And it's one of the main pride of the town. Endless source of uh, photogenic uh, scenes, summer, autumn and winter. But this time, shot uh, last year, the local brass band was trying to sell them uh, a new idea, new uh, brass band uh, music idea in Aquarii. And I just had to see that. So let's see if Aquarii is indeed a funky town. Even though people seem to be a bit backwards and old-fashioned around here, they make up for it in other ways. Like I've uh, felt so well when I've been walking around the town with my camera backpack often and tripod. I have noticed how friendly people are as I'm passing by the total stranger I am here now. 
and uh, as I'm passing by, they almost always say good day, the standard Icelandic greeting, and it's very easy to get into chats about the weather and such. And the same goes for traffic, it's uh, slower than in Reykjavik, people are not in the same hurry, and the drivers generally show great consideration to pedestrians. And the town is also well known for the friendly traffic lights. And when it's lunch or dinner time, the traffic drops to almost nothing since uh, these people eat at home if they can. But uh, when it comes to food, I have to mention one strange tradition that developed differently here than in Reykjavik. And that is the fast food tradition. It took over 10 years to teach these people how to eat hamburgers. So the first burger joints were short-lived. And finally, it was a local drive through shop that picked up this uh, weird uh, burger thing uh, idea and made it into their own. And that was when things started to move. The aquarated fast food industry developed a whole new way of uh, serving uh, both burgers and Iceland's uh, fast food number one, the hot dog. The aquarated hot dog is uh, deep fried and served with uh, melted cheese and fries and spices. And when they serve burgers, they put the fries in between the bread and the burger. But this idea spread out, so there are places in Reykjavik offering this uh, concept, and they always call it Akureyringur, referring to someone that lives in Akureyri. So again, even those people seem to be backward in many fields of life, they do have this wild side to them as well. So let's move to sports. There are two major sport clubs in town, but they have worked more together in the recent years, and the sports infrastructure is excellent. Just like the swimming pool that has been one of the prides of the town for the last decades, located just by one of the three camping grounds in and around town, but there are plenty of options to choose from when it comes to accommodation. And overall, Nowhere outside the capital region can you find this good selection of uh, entertainment, culture and other options for guests as an aquarium. And it is the perfect location to discover the 900 km long Arctic coastway, chase the midnight sun and the northern lights. But I have to warn you though, if you are on the road chasing the light or the weather, do not call the local people if you want to check the weather. Use the internet use webcams, do not call them. And that's because of this weakness that uh, these people have. They do not only lie about the weather all the time, they even have a Facebook group called uh, Crazy Good Weather in Akureyri, where they state that the weather is always great here. But this is an old habit since long before the internet. When someone would call up north and ask about the weather, they would always lie. It's always good weather there. But then came the internet, and the people of Akureyri, they just hated this thing for the first years. And this group with people who are still lying about the weather has 8,000 members in a town with 20,000 people. So that should tell you a story of its own about the mentality of the people in Akureyri. And uh, my name is Gilvi. Sending you best regards from my old hometown, Akureyri, where the weather is uh, uh, almost always great. <laughs>